you know, Budweiser, Anheuser Busch, Bud Light, they have given a master class in how to not handle a situation where you have basically made everybody mad at you. But what's more important? Having your main customer base mad at you? In other words, the majority? Or having these guys over here, which makes up less than 1% of the population, mad at you? In other words, the minority. I don't know. Seems like a pretty easy decision for me. But for some reason, not only Bud Light CEO, but other CEOs of corporations seem to have a hard time handling these situations. And because they're too afraid. They're too afraid to make a statement. And stand by it. And this here is a perfect case of that. Uh, the CEO of Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch, was on CBS's morning show the other morning. And this is covered by the Daily Mail. He still doesn't get it. A tone-deaf Anheuser-Busch CEO won't rule out Bud Light working with Dylan Mulvaney again. And then on top of that, he says the firm needs to appreciate what the customer wants, despite debacle costing firm $20 billion and counting. Head scratcher. Anheuser-Busch CEO has refused to rule out partnering with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney again, as he avoided answering how much the marketing blunder had cost Bud Light. Brendan Whitworth... U.S. CEO insisted that his priority was his employees and added that they had poured three times the amount of investment into Bud Light for this year. As the company has lost a staggering $20 billion and counting in market cap. Speaking to CBS this morning, Whitworth was asked if he would send Mulvaney another can, knowing the backlash. But instead of giving a definitive answer, the CEO instead launched into a pre-rehearsed speech about social con the social conversation that the disaster campaign caused. Whitworth added that they need to deeply understand the customer and appreciate what they want from the brand, as he was blasted on social media for doing a dismal job. He was then challenged over his refusal to answer. With Tony Docupil, I guess that's how you pronounce his last name, asking if the decision was a mistake as sales for the beer dropped a, set, a staggering 28.5%. Whitworth again avoided the question, saying, As we move forward, we want to focus on what we do best, which is brewing great beer for everyone, listening to our consumers, being humble, and listening to them. Wow, that's not CEO speak, is it? Making sure that we do right by our employees, take care and support our partners, and ultimately make an impact in the communities that we serve. He added that Bud Light doesn't belong in the divisive conversation around the marketing move, saying that it has moved away from beer. You think? The CEO said that the impact on the employees is his responsibility and that everything we do, I'm accountable for. He slammed. He was slammed by consumers on social media shortly after the interview, with some calling for a new comms team. One said, "Brendan Whitworth interview on CBS. Interesting. Did Brendan not hear and understand the questions, or was was he just ignoring the questions? No, he was ignoring the questions. Sounded like." Bogus word spaghetti to me, too little, too late. Well, yeah, that's that's what CEOs do. See, CEOs of major companies, they can't really speak their mind because of the ramifications of what happens to their stock because they have investors they have to answer to, they have a fiduciary responsibility to those investors. 
And if he were to come out and say what he really wanted to say, the stock would tank, he'd lose more market cap, and then the investors are mad at him. And if you have investors big enough, like BlackRock and Vanguard, they can make moves to remove you as CEO. Another added, Bud Light, your CEO doing a dismal job on CBS Morning. Brendan Whitler trying to both sides of his decisions. The answer should have been, we make a great product that we want everyone to enjoy, and we are inclusive of all, and won't tolerate hateful bigotry. Needs a new comms team. Well, uh, okay. This comments come after the beer brand saw sales drop 28.5%. The week ending June 17th, one of the worst weeks since the campaign aired in April. That's a deeper drop from the week ending June 10th, which saw a 28, 26.8% drop, according to Bump Williams Consulting, blah, 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 blah. The new low beats the previous worst, almost 26% drop for the week of ending May 25th. It comes after claims that two Bud Light marketing executives have, been, have finally been fired after, over the fiasco, which the company's denying. Uh, when approached by Daily Mail earlier this month, a friend of Heinerschein said she's not supposed to talk about it. She can't. In a statement to DailyMail.com, a spokesperson for Anheuser-Busch said they were still both on a leave of absence. See, and these are the things that just make people mad. It just say, you know, they're no longer with the company. You don't have to say they're fired. You don't have to say they resigned. You don't have to say they quit. You don't have to say they're laid off. You don't have to say any of that. You just say, you know what? We've, we, we've mutually parted ways. That makes them still sound good. That protects the company. And there you have it. Heinerschein's job was taken over by Todd Allen, who recently served as global vice president of Budweiser. The marketing decision appears to be one of the worst in American history to come from an advertising backlash. Sources told the Daily Caller that executives only claimed they were on a leave of absence to avoid a lawsuit. See, it... they said, to my understanding, if we publicly announce the word fire, it opens up the potential for them to sue us. That's why we said leave of absence. The wholesalers who the wholesalers would have had an absolute heyday with leadership if they didn't remove Heinerscheid. Wholesalers were told they are both gone for good by leadership during in-person conversations. The source claimed they are already shifted to all, all their direct reports to new people and the head of marketing. He added that he thought Blake was actually awesome. I think he was just caught in the crossfire, a source said, but he also did hire her, so that's a fault. So there you have it. Budweiser's CEO, basically, and I'm sure he was told to do this by his board and investors to not answer the questions and just give CEO speak and um, CYA. So what do you think? Comment down below. Please share your thoughts. And while you're at it, please, if you would, take the time to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Hit the notification bell to get notified when my content becomes available here on YouTube. And as always, I thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you later.